In this video, I'm going to show you how to export your animations from Loom to Adobe Animate and After Effects. Then I'll show you some examples of post-production you can do on your animations. If you want to know more about the Loom app, go check out my previous video. But without further ado, let's jump in. So first we need to export our SVG file from our iPad or tablet. This process will differ slightly depending on your device. From the iPad I had to go into the Files app, navigate to your Loom folder and find a folder called Weaves. And then I just shared that whole folder with my Google Drive. But you could just as easily have physically connected your device to your PC and dragged the files across. So now that we have our SVG file that we've imported from our device, we're going to open it in Adobe Animate. So I've opened up Adobe Animate here, we're going to press Create New and I'm going to choose full HD, 1920 by 1080. I'm going to zoom out here. Simply drag the SVG into the Adobe Animate file. And then you should get a prompt here. And you wanna choose import each path to different layer. And here is my animation from Loom. So I'm just gonna drag it to the center. So you could manually prepare this file in here by breaking apart the different layers of the SVG, going to timeline and distributing to different layers and keyframes. But kindly, the guys at Loom have provided a script to do the process all for you. So you can click here to download this script. I'll post a link to this page in the description. Now that we've downloaded the script, if we simply drag it into our animate file and click run as command, it's basically done a bunch of operations on this file for us to prepare it for usage in Adobe Animate. You can see here, we now have all our keyframes, but because in Loom, we'd set the thread for our red colored circle here to only be five frames. Within Loom, it would loop, but to Adobe Animate, it only has five frames, so it just kind of stops there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to copy some of these frames and paste them. So I'm just going to grab all of those frames, I'm just gonna right click, copy frames, click these two cells here, right click, paste frames, and then just to fill out those last two frames, just grab uh, these, these four frames here, copy and paste. And then we have the full keyframes here. So if you wanted to preview this, we can click this uh, loop option here and drag this arrow to the end of our keyframes and then press play. It's a lot faster than it was in Loom. It was 12 frames per second in Loom. So on the right here, I'm going to change our frame rate to 12. And there we go, that's how you import it into Animate. So we're gonna save this as a FLA file. So I've created a new Adobe After Effects project here. I'm gonna select the project panel and press Control I and I'm going to locate our Adobe Animate.fla file. And I will import it. Uh, press OK. And it's created a composition for us here, so if we double click that. Down here we've got uh, five different layers. I'm just going to give them appropriate names. And then if we press space, we can see our animation playing nicely. So now that we're in After Effects, we can do a bit of post-production on this. So for example, let's add a gradient to the background. I'm going to click in the Layers panel and press Ctrl Y to add a new solid. Press OK and drag it behind all our other layers. I'm going to add a gradient ramp effect. And I'm going to choose some colors for the ramp. Now if I just solo the Lines layer here, we have this layer with these lines flying about. If I press Ctrl D and duplicate this, and just solo them both so they're, they're the only things that are visible. And I'm gonna add a fill effect to one of these. It'll default to red there. I'm gonna change it to the same color as the layer below, but just slightly darker. Something like that. Now I'm gonna add a set matte effect to this new layer. And for this take mat from layer, I'm gonna set it to the layer underneath. And make sure both are set to continuously rasterized. And now let's move this a little bit like that. And you can see now we have this kind of 3D effect on these lines. Maybe let's add a few shadows. So for the face, 
If we duplicate this face layer by selecting it and pressing Ctrl D, and let's right click this layer, and let's rename it and call it face shadow. Let's add a fill effect to this face shadow layer. And let's set it to black. Let's add a mask to it by selecting the circle tool and enabling mask mode. And let's position this circle where we want the light to be coming from. Let's press inverted and reposition it a bit. Let's twirl the mask down and tweak the feathering. Let's set the blending mode to dissolve. Let's go back to that fill and change it to a darker version of our skin color. Something like that. And now let's add a highlight. Let's duplicate the face shadow layer and call it face rim light. Let's change the fill of this rim light to the skin color. And let's select the mask and move it around to the edge. And let's press shift and double click the mask, which brings up this bounding box and allows us to resize the mask. Make it a bit bigger. And now let's move the mask a bit further down like that. And I'm gonna tweak the feathering so it's a bit more harsh, which means decreasing the feathering. We have something like that. Let's do the same with the neck. I'm going to duplicate the neck layer, add a fill, change it to black. Add a mask, which I'm going to draw myself manually around the neck. Uh, let's change, let's rename this to neck shadow. Change the feathering of the mask. Change the blending mode to dissolve. Change the color of the fill to a darker version of the neck. Now I kind of wish that I'd sort of colored in this hair a bit. We're gonna add a fill behind it. The lines are gonna move and the color of the hair is gonna leak out from behind the lines, but I feel like it's within the style of our, our drawing here. So I'm gonna do it anyway. So I'm going to deselect anything I have selected down here, select the pen tool and draw a shape uh, behind the line for the hair. And let's change it to this orange color we have. And drag this below our features layer. And then as we play it, you're gonna see it's not gonna look exact, but I think it adds something to it there. I'm gonna rename this layer to hair. And I'm gonna actually make it a slightly darker version of this color, or maybe even that blue. Now, if we wanted to add some more animation to this, we could pre-compose our animation and call it head. And I'm just gonna extend the duration of the parent composition here to 30 seconds. And I'm going to loop this head composition by right-clicking it, pressing time, enable time remapping, holding alt and clicking this stopwatch here for the time remap, type loop out, and now extend the duration of this layer. And extend the duration of this solid layer behind it with our gradient on it. Now you can see there's a blank frame every time it loops. 
This is a common thing. I have no idea why it happens, but I know how to fix it. And the way to fix it is you go to the keyframe just before the last keyframe of your time remap. You select your time remap. You go to animation, add time remap keyframe, and you drag this keyframe on top of your final keyframe. And now you won't get that little blip anymore. And we're going to change the anchor point by pressing Y on our keyboard or clicking the pan behind button up here and dragging the anchor point down to the bottom of our composition. Now we're going to add some rotation keyframes. If we click on our head, press R, add a rotation keyframe. Okay, let's add it at four seconds. Let's go to zero seconds. Change the rotation so it's 180 degrees. And the head's going to sort of animate up like this. In fact, let's move this keyframe all the way to eight seconds. And then let's set this keyframe to minus 180 degrees. And now it's going to kind of come up like the sun and then go back down. And we're going to have that repeat. So let's hold Alt, click on the stopwatch for rotation, loop out. So let's also add a keyframe at four seconds, so halfway at zero degrees. So I'm gonna press animation, add rotation keyframe. And now let's highlight all these keyframes, press F9 to add some easing. Go to the graph editor. And I want the head to sort of come up very quickly, slow down and then go down really quickly. So to achieve this, I'm going to drag the handles like so. I want to speed everything up, so I'm going to highlight all of these keyframes, drag my playhead to the start, hold Alt, and then drag the last keyframe, which scales all of the keyframes. So I'm sort of doubling the speed of the animation here. Now if I press play. I think that looks good. I don't want it to completely stop when it gets to the middle. I just want it to be very slow. I'm going to grab this handle here. I want to pull it this way, but you'll notice if I do that, it only drags one of the handles. So I want to lock the, both those handles together. So I'm going to right click, keyframe velocity, lock outgoing to incoming, press OK, and then drag this handle up a little bit. Now let's play it. That's better. You could try adding some motion blur if you think that suits it. However, I think it seems a bit extreme. Before we end, I have set up a Patreon where people can support my work and at the same time get access to exclusive project files and asset packs, discount codes on some great plugins and more. I have also set up a Discord server for animators and designers to chat about everything animation and get feedback on their work from other motion junkies. Come be a part of this new community. Make sure to subscribe for more videos, like the video and hit the bell for notifications of new uploads. And as always, see you on the flippity flop.